For more on the U.S.-Filipino relations in Beijing, we are having Mr. Teng Jianchun, Director of the American Studies Department at the China Institute of International Studies. In Washington, D.C., joining us is Ivan Eland, who is a senior fellow and director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. Meanwhile, joining us from Manila in the Philippines, we are having Mr. Richard Hidarian, political science professor at De La Salle University in the Philippines. Gentlemen, welcome to our program. First of all, uh, Ms. Hidarian, Mr. Hidarian, what do you make of eventually the meeting between President Obama and President Duterte after earlier quite a dramatic exchange between the two sides. Well, the dust up between President Obama and Duterte in some ways was not completely unexpected because uh, a few weeks ago President Duterte also uh, made expletive statements about the American ambassador Philip Goldberg. Uh, so he, uh, Duterte has been breaking one taboo after the other when it comes to relationship with the U.S. So somehow uh, you, you were not totally surprised by this. What we were surprised about is when President Duterte, after trying to do some damage control and releasing a regret statement, and then the next day during the East Asia Summit, he made another criticism of the United States about its historical injustices against Filipino Muslims when Obama was in the crowd. So I, from what I know, they did not shake each other's hands at the, at the end of the East Asia Forum. Mm. So in many ways, this represents some temporary diplomatic setback, but I, I believe that the fundamentals of bilateral relations will continue. Mm. Uh, Mr. Eland, what do you think Washington makes of this new president in the Philippines? Obviously, he has quite strong personality and at times would have outbursts of words. What do, does Washington make of this personality? Well, I think uh, they think he's another Donald Trump, only a Filipino Donald Trump. And I think uh, they're probably not too far from that. Uh, you know, uh, you may not like a country's policies, but when you disrespect their leader, I mean, no one likes that. And it's, uh, it's a bad thing to do under any circumstances. I think the real problem is that the United States goes around to these leaders and begs them to be U.S. allies when it should be the other way around. The United States is defending the Philippines, it's defending Japan, it's defending South Korea, it's defending Taiwan uh, against uh, what they, what all these countries uh, are leery of a rising China. Well, if the U.S. didn't do that and retracted its defense perimeter, you would see those countries being really nice to the United States because they want the trade and they want the economic benefits of dealing right. with China, but they also want the U.S. protection in case China, they have a dispute with China, such as over the South China Sea or the East Asia, East China All Sea. Right. Uh, Mr. Tang hmm. here in Beijing, what do you think? President Duterte is mm -hmm. trying to do from the Chinese way of looking at him. I mean, on the one hand, uh, he is still finger pointing to China to a certain extent, mm -hmm. for example, during mm -hmm. the East Asia mm -hmm. Summit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he also, with his words, mm -hmm. uh, distanced himself and possibly the Philippines from the United States, mm -hmm. temporarily at least, it yeah. seems. Uh, what does China make of this reality? Uh, Duterte had been the office of the presidency of the Philippines already uh, for two months, and uh, so far we cannot give a very clear cut mm. and, uh, interpretation of his policy towards China. Sometimes he said good words to China, some said uh, he said a bad word toward the United States. But I think uh, at least the two points I'd like to mention here. The first, he is realistic. Mm. as compared with the previous uh, president, uh, Aquino III. And uh, he's from the grassroots. He's quite familiar with the situation of the F Filipino society. And he'd like to improve the social life of the, the country. Mm. This is uh, the number one job for him. And the second, uh, the criticism against uh, the United States and the, against the President Obama actually is anger from the recent uh, years cooperation between the two countries. Mm. Now, the United States only gave some lip service and uh, no, no real support or assistance, especially after the uh, announcement of the ruling of the arbitration. And uh, you know, the Secretary of State, uh, John Kerry, 
gave a very clear you know, statement saying there is nothing to do with the United States in right. this regard. So I think this is actually anger from the Philippines. Duterte just expressed the anger from that country. All right. Uh, Mr. Hidari, I want to come back to you now. It's very important to understand for many in this region, what exactly does the Filipino president have in mind? What is his priority? How does he see uh, the domestic issues, for example, the drug war going on over there and his spats with some of the political enemies he had at home vis-a-vis uh, -vis mm. the Filipino president's uh, new drawn uh, international st strategy uh, also in the region toward China. What do you think? Yeah, three things very quickly. Mm. The first thing is that President Duterte is signaling his independence from the United States by so explicitly standing up to the United States and criticizing the United States. He's trying to say to the rest of the region, including China, that the Philippines is not the proxy of America, that it can think for itself mm. and it can decide for itself. Which brings us to the second point. There's a clear point of disagreement between the Duterte administration and Washington on the issue of human rights. It seems that President Duterte is completely uh, unwilling to consider any criticism, especially from the West and from the United Nations, with respect to allegation of extrajudicial mm. activities here in the Philippines. So he's willing to stand up to the U.S. on that, and he's very irritable. So President Obama said that when he's going to meet Duterte, he's going to discuss human rights front and center, and I think that ticked off Duterte and may explain his response. And right. lastly, yes, it's true that Duterte makes di may says different things about China, but more than his 90% of what he says about China is about peace, is about engagement and bilateral negotiation, mm -hmm. which is very different from what was the position of the previous President. Right. Uh, Mr. Eland, both President Duterte from the Philippines and his administration important members have been talking about the Philippines' relations with China vis-a-vis -vis its relation with the United States. A foreign minister quote, if I could, is suggesting good relations with China does not mean we are going to weaken our friendship with the United States. This is a direct quote from the Filipino foreign minister. Does Washington believe so? Well, I think Washington probably does uh, see it all or nothing. I think the, the United States policy still is, uh, has uh, uh, recollections of the Cold War when small countries had a lot of power over the U.S. because it was just desperate for, for allies. And uh, I think the United States should stay neutral in these disputes in the South and East China Seas. But uh, implicitly, it doesn't because it's allied with uh, some of the countries on the other side of China. I don't see, uh, I think China's uh, territorial uh, aspirations there are completely unreasonable, but that's not the problem of the United States. And I think the United States really ought to, uh, uh, and Donald Trump has pointed out this in the, in the presidential campaign, the United States should question some of these alliances and mm. what we're getting out of it. It's very makes our foreign policy very inflexible, and it allows uh, leaders like, uh, you know, uh, the Philippines and uh, other other leaders to to do these things. And uh, mm. you know, I don't fault them for doing that. They want to. He wants to be independent of the United States. He wants to show right. China that uh, they can get along. But he's also doing that within the shield of, under the shield of the U.S. And he could. The United States should be careful because this guy is very volatile and he could get the United States into a shooting war with China or some other country there that, they don't, that the United States doesn't want to be in. Okay, Mr. Hidarian, I want to also have an assessment of what Manila believes Washington is willing to do mm. for itself. I mean, for mm. Manila, of course. There was, back in the year 1951, yeah, think, uh, mutual defense right. agreement. That was a, a, a very long yeah. time. But now, over the past few years, there's something called the Enhanced Div a Defense Cooperation Agreement between the two sides. And, and the Philippines is trying yeah. to persuade America to protect the Philippines by having more American troops mm. to be stationed in the Philippines and have joint military exercises with the Philippines. But what would these mean for Manila? convincing mm. Washington to be on his side, no matter what it is. Yes, uh, for the Duterte administration, 
clearly the United States is not doing enough. The U.S. never clarified whether the Scarborough Shoal or other land features claimed by the Philippines in the South China Sea will be defended by the United States if there will be a war between the Philippines and China. Unlike what is the U.S. position on the Senkaku DLU when they said clearly that falls within the mutual defense treaty with, uh, with Japan. So on one hand, Duterte is angry that the U.S. is not giving enough commitments. And on the other hand, if he tries to reach out to China, it's possible that he may be open to put some restrictions on further American access to Philippine bases. Remember, the Subic and Clark have not yet been opened up to American forces under the Enhanced Defense Cooperation mm. Agreement. So that's still up for negotiation between him and the U.S. and sure between China and the Philippines too. Right. Mr. Tong, mm -hmm. very complicated picture. You see yeah. a lot of moving factors all going on at the same time. So what does China make of this? Uh, President Duterte said openly, mm -hmm. despite sometimes his moody words, Mm -hmm. He suggested that the Philippines is not going to, in public, talk yeah. about you know, the dispute between China and the Philippines toward the South China Sea issue, but rather to negotiate and discussion with a closed door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does China take that gesture? And well knowing what is going on right now between the Philippines mm -hmm. and the United States. A actually, after the ruling of the so-called arbitration by the Philippines, all the party concerned in the South China Sea have returned to the original point. Mm. They all promised to, you know, uh, do the negotiation and, and exercise and, restraint and, and restrain mm. their, you know, uh, muscle and not not to show so much muscle in this game. Mm. And actually, uh, there is a, a fundamental change, I think, in the balance of power in this region. Uh, the United States and the, and China would like to have more engagement in not only in trade, not only in security, but this time they prefer to you know, go together you know, to have more uh, you know, cooperation with uh, ASEAN countries in security and mm. also in economy. And this is the fundamental change of balance power in this region. Mm. And uh, so I think uh, the Filipino president at this moment, he is quite familiar with the change. And the best choice for the Philippines to go ahead mm. to have a good best diplomacy is to cooperate with the, the big powers. The, we used to say uh, the ASEAN countries would like to have uh, more cooperation in security with the United States mm. and more cooperation in economy with China. But this time, after the fundamental change of balance power, they have to find a good solution to find the best choice I see. to maintain the balanced relation with China and with the United States. Mr. Yiland, following what Mr. Tang in Beijing just said, I want to also have your assessment. What has changed regarding the issue of South China Sea? Have all sides, well, they're suggesting we need to exercise restraint, at the same time done some soul searching about how important really is this issue to all of them? and how strategically they want to approach this. Well, this is only going to be one of those issues that are on the list to be handled. This is very important. Is it still going to be the priority issue, Mr. Eland? Well, I would hope that it would, you know, people would reconsider what's been going on because I think it's very dangerous for all these countries to mm. be jousting in the, uh, in the South China Sea. And I'm hoping that uh, the U.S. doesn't get dragged into it. From my perspective, uh, the U.S. really shouldn't be caring about, you know, a bunch of rocks in the South China Sea, which is really what we're, what they're, what the dispute is. Uh, the United States should have a stay neutral, but I, it should be really neutral because it's not now. It says it is, but it has alliances uh, both in the South China Sea and the East China Sea with. Uh, one side of the dispute. And I think, you know, you can say that uh, there's a web of economic um, interaction, but it come, when it comes down to right. security, uh, there's uh, China and then there's everybody else. At least that's how the, a lot of these smaller countries feel. And the U.S. Uh, is, uh, by treaty, uh, required to, to uh, uh, defend these countries and so but what do we get out of it we we haven't gotten any much from Japan and South Korea economically 
and we're certainly not going to get anything from the Philippines right. economically. So I think uh, Mr. Trump uh, is right in a certain <laughs> respect, and that is we need to re, re, uh, reconsider our alliances in the in the eastern. Well, I don't Mr. Think Elan, we really need them anymore. You, Mr. Elan, you just revealed to the rest of the world you're probably is one of those Trump supporters. But having said that, <laughs> let me go to Mr. No, I'm not a Trump. Uh, all not, right, I'm not a Trump supporter, <laughs> but I think he does. I think he does make sense on that particular point. I would not vote for Donald Trump. All but right, I think he's a wild man, and I think. The, I, I think the leader of the Philippines I, is right, right up there with him. I wouldn't check your track record when it comes to voting, but uh, let's just put that joke aside. Uh, uh, Mr. Hidarian. Okay, there are a lot of things facing the Philippines right now. What is going on inside the country? And also at the same time, your most important ally, the United States. They have an election going on just in a few months. Two candidates have very different opinions. And also, you have this uh, China and the United States, at least during the G20 summit, they t apparently work together even on the climate change issue, which has been applauded by the rest of the world. Yes. And also, yeah. you have China, uh, in a way, willing to talk to the Philippines about issues of common yeah. concern for negotiation. Uh, so yeah. what would all of these factors yeah. mean for Duterte's administration's yeah. choices when it comes to the hard issues between yeah. China and Philippines. Uh, Mr. Hidarian. Right. Yeah. I mean, first of all, uh, with respect to China, it's very likely that within a month, uh, President Duterte uh, will visit China. Uh, this is what I'm hearing, mm. that he may choose China as his first state visit. And that will be very important because the optics will be very clear. After this dust up with President Obama, after his uh, gay slur comment against the American ambassador, now he's choosing China possibly as his first state visit, which is very different from other Filipino president who almost always chose United States as the first state visit. Well, we'll see now that happened. will have an impact on mm -hmm. US elections because that will put pressure on Hillary Clinton to prove that President Obama is not weak and what's happening with the Philippines is not as a result of the pivot Asia or All the right. failure of the Democrats foreign policy and for sure Donald Trump will make the most out of this. <laughs> we don't want to go to the Donald Trump story but uh, <laughs> Mr. Tong, without further commenting on Mr. Trump's uh, strategies, uh, let me ask you before we go, mm -hmm. is this an opportunity or is this going to be just a break? from further contest mm -hmm. and further tension in the region. As we mentioned just now, I think the transition of power in this region has been under its way. And uh, there is no uh, terminal at, at so far. I, th I think the, we should have a close look at the development. And uh, I think the situation in the South China Sea actually is a security dilemma for the two big powers in mm. this region. And uh, the ASEAN countries, are very cautious about the competition between the two big powers. They worry about the competition. Mm. They worry about the uh, possible clash between the two uh, major powers. So they uh, change their policy toward the United States and toward China. So this is a bad choice, but I think we still have, uh, uh, haven't have found uh, the good solution to out of the security dilemma between the two big powers. 